So in this video, we're going to go ahead and get started with Photomatics, and we're going to do that by grabbing our images here in the same folder we've been working with, our number one. We'll open our stitched folder, and we're going to select the first nine. The tenth is just a preview. And we'll do this, uh, we'll just drag these nine images right into Photomatics. And we're going to merge for HDR processing. And there's our images. Okay, and the first option is if uh, you weren't using a tripod, which we always do, of course. And then remove ghosts. Um, we're not going to do that. Um, we don't have any motion. Reduce noise. We're going to choose all source images. Uh, we'll leave the strength right where it is. And we're going to reduce chromatic aberrations. Yep, anytime we get a chance, we do want to go ahead and reduce the chromatic aberrations. As I mentioned before, the process just lends itself to this. And uh, you'll see that in, in quite a bit of HDR images. So we always select that particular image. So it's merging. Merging to HDR. And again, this is uh, similar to PT GUI. The more memory and the better processing speed you have, the, the faster this particular process will go. So our preview is complete. And the first thing I like to do here is to expand or, or uh, get the full preview here. So I'm going to move this uh, these presets over here to the right and then uh, click this Fit button here. And you can see it uh, indicates that the screen is refreshing, so there's a bigger view for us, or a bigger preview. I'll move this histogram out of the way, and take a look at this photo here. Looks pretty good. Uh, obviously, there's not quite perfect. Uh, so we'll go to our presets here, and it's kind of nice. Photomatics offers all of these different uh, presets um, that are included with the program. So there's photographic, for example. Um, there's painterly, which is a little bit crazy, um, but you know there's a use for it depending on what you're doing. There's grunge, um, more artistic look. There's creative. Uh, soft, and deep. This is probably appropriate for a bar. Got the neon lights there. Anyway, you get the idea. There's plenty of uh, presets that are included with the Photomatics program here. Um, they also let you do your own presets. So you click on this My Presets tab at the bottom, and these are all presets that I've actually created. So I found looks that I like with the uh, photograph uh, or the settings, and I'll go ahead and save it um, on occasion when, when I'm happy with the look, and I give it my own name. So this is one that I'll often use in the HDR side or for the tone mapping side. But today we're going to do Exposure Fusion. So up in the upper left hand corner I click this Exposure Fusion button. And you can see this photo definitely doesn't look quite right. And um, it's because these sliders over here are way out to the max and just not adjusted appropriately. So what we're going to do is click on the default button. And this will take us back to this default settings for Photomatics for Exposure Fusion. And that looks pretty normal, or at least a lot better. So really what we do is we have all these sliders over here. And we just kind of slide them and see how it looks. So we'll take this to 5 and take a look. And, um, you know, basically there is no right or wrong. It's just kind of for lack of a better term we're just playing with it figuring out what looks best so by moving the blending point we can adjust which of photos out of those nine that we're using uh, get more preference you can see this dark area up here there's a um, lack of details which is okay for this particular shot that's kind of what we're looking for I'm gonna bump the color saturation up a little bit here and that definitely introduces a little more color and back it off just a bit to, to about two. We don't want to go too crazy on the color saturation, especially if you're post processing in, say, uh, Photoshop. So we'll move the black clip, and I'll move it all the way just to get an idea of what effect this is having. And that's obviously a little too much, um, so we're just going to back this way down to about one. There we go. That's about right. Um, and we'll uh, play with the strength, probably move it up to about 5 is typically where, where I start and then you know, according to how it looks I'll back it down a little bit if, it, if I feel it's a little too strong. So there's about 2. 
That looks pretty good. And your shadows a little bit too much, so I'm gonna back that off. And I kind of like that; it gives it a natural bar look, a uh, little bit darker look, which is okay. So we have a few more shadows um, than we could, but I'm okay with that. And the contrast, uh, you gotta be careful with this one. When you bump this up, you can see how it kind of makes the photo look a little bit artificial or a little artsy. So I'm gonna back that off and um, put it back to right about a one, probably. See how that looks. That looks okay. Um, let's see here. I think about two is about where it was at default, and that's about what I want. So let's see how that looks. There we go. So um, the white clip, you know, again, I use kind of like the black clip. I'll max that out all the way to the right see what effect that has on the photo and then minimize it to my liking. The midtones I really kind of leave alone to be honest with you. Um, when you hover here I just wanted to point out that at the bottom of this there you can see there's a little note below the process button right there and so when you hover on a slider it tells you what you're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and click 360 image because it is in this case which just evens out the edges of the photos so that when they're seen together in a spherical type image that they match and there's not a big line. So go ahead and click process and this can take a little bit. Um, it goes through a few different phases. So in this case, um, we did do reducing chromatic aberration. So it's kind of nice. It does it on your original original source images, but then it also does it on the final image. So here's our preview. I'm going to go ahead and uh, save our photomatics image here. Click Save As. And I'm just going to navigate to the same folder we've been using on the desktop, that number one folder. And there we go. And inside that number one folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. Uh, we have our TIFF and our Stitched already, so now we're going to create one called Photomatics. So we'll just name this Photomatics and we'll create it. And at the bottom here, you'll notice we have the option to save as a TIFF 8 bit, 16 bit, because it's Exposure Fusion, we'll do 8. And this we can open our saved image with the Photoshop, but at this time I'm not going to do that, so I'll just save this image. And we'll go ahead and close our preview and close Photomatics here. And we'll navigate to this folder, the number one folder here. And go to our Photomatics folder. We have our TIFF stitched Photomatics. And there is our final fused, explosion fused, exposure fused uh, image in Photomatics.